every one of us is going to face adversity at various points in life. It's never a question of if you will face adversity, but when. The Bible promises us in John chapter 16, verse 33, that in this world, we will have tribulation, so it's a guarantee from God Himself. It's not for us to shy away from hardships, but to lean into God more in such times. He is a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. In today's message, I want to share with you what I felt God deposited in my spirit for such situations. Your faith gets tested each time you go through adversity, not as a form of punishment as some may think. Whatever happens to us in life is inconsequential to God because He can use it for your good. Even if Satan is the chief culprit in your adversity, God can turn it around for your good. You have to learn to stand on the Word of God when things don't make sense and your life is falling apart. You could be facing eviction, bankruptcy, depression, sickness, and many other things, but remember that you're not alone. We're going to have a look at what the Word of God says to navigate your situation. When life doesn't make sense, the Word of God will act as your compass to overcome your challenges. Let us pray before we get into it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to deliver your Word to your children. Use me as a vessel of honor to speak to someone today who's on the verge of total collapse and needs hope. May your word give life to someone today and hope to get through their predicament by your grace. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Life has a way of throwing us curveballs at the most inconvenient times when we least expect them. They often cause us to doubt whether or not we're on the right path in the pursuit of our goals. This happened with Joseph, who had a dream about one day ruling his family, yet what followed was anything but. He went through so much adversity that no human being could have scripted in their minds. This was the case when my marriage went up in smoke, when I least expected it and felt betrayed. Like Joseph, I was at a point where I expected things would get better, but they only got worse. I went from living a dream to experiencing a horror show in a short space of time which was disheartening. For the first time in my life, I questioned whether God was with me in all this. At the same time, my career also took a nosedive as I went from a place of hope to despair. I had recently started a new job, which I hoped would be a stepping stone to better opportunities, but the move turned out to be sour, making my situation worse. At one point, I was nearly fired for poor job performance, and had that happen, I don't know where I'd be today. I can only thank God. The job became more like servitude than a place of working with purpose and I soon realized there was no future there. What made it worse was every job application was unsuccessful, which left me feeling hopeless at times. I couldn't get a new job, and I felt stuck in a dead-end job going nowhere with my life. If it weren't for my fear of God, I could have ended it all, as I didn't know what to do. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. In times of doubt, this passage of Scripture assures us that no matter what we go through works to our advantage in the end. What the enemy may have intended for your harm, God can turn it around and use it for your good. Look back on your life, and you'll find this to be true. You may not understand some things at the moment, and they eventually make sense at a later stage in life. During difficult moments, 
you'll find that the Word of God has a way of coming alive in a powerful way. It becomes real in your most difficult moments when God desires to show Himself mighty. Consider how Jesus responded when He was tempted in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, which says, But He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We are spiritual beings to begin with, and therefore our spiritual nourishment is more important than the physical food we consume. As I went through those hardships, my life changed dramatically almost overnight. The friendships we had with my former spouse fell apart and my name got dragged through the mud which was painful. One of the positives of that experience was that it made me realize who my true friends were. I realized that many of the friendships I thought I had were not real to begin with. God became my closest companion even though most others had forsaken me in my lowest moments. I felt like someone who was lost at sea and had no idea where life was taking him. It felt like my life was drawing to a close and that everything was fading away. Never had I experienced such profound betrayal, especially from someone who vowed to stand by me through thick and thin. It was like a dagger through my heart. With my job situation, I went through a period of living on the edge daily, feeling I could be fired any day. I had lost my sense of direction and didn't know what I'd do with my life. I didn't have money to consider further education, and it brought a lot of anxiety in my heart. It felt like everything I had ever believed about my life was a falsehood at that difficult moment. As His Word says that He will never leave or forsake us, this proved to be true from day to day. While my situation didn't immediately change, I never went to bed hungry or destitute as God carried me. It was like how Elijah survived his lowest moment being fed by the ravens in his time of isolation. I experienced God's word coming alive to me in ways I had never before encountered in my life. Going through the adversity had me wondering if things were ever going to change or if that was going to be it. The book of Romans chapter 8 Verse 18 tells us, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. On the one hand, I looked at what God's promises said about my life, and on the other, I saw the opposite reality. This left me confused and sometimes made me angry at God for not honoring His word. I sought Him wholeheartedly, but things weren't making sense to me. The emotional pain in my marriage breakdown was so hard to bear. I had pledged before God and everyone that I would stay with my spouse through all of life's moments. I expected God to step in to bring about restoration and it only got worse. It was important to me to honor my side of the commitment according to God's word. If we weren't going to be restored, at least I'd have played my part. I relied on God's teachings about marriage, which state that in cases of abandonment or infidelity, one is permitted to move forward. While other people discouraged me from doing so, I held fast to my faith even though I was tempted to cave in at times. I prayed for my rebellious spouse through it all, until I felt God say it was enough and I had a sense of peace that surpasses all understanding come over me. At my job, it felt as though the hardship was becoming unusual, as if there was a personal attack on my life. I value the importance of diligence in all endeavors, but this experience felt more akin to bondage than anything else. It became a situation of being overworked and underpaid, leaving me drained at the end of each day. 
Even as God guided me through that period, I felt ensnared and unsure of how to free myself. I applied for new jobs for more than a year, with a few potential opportunities coming up. I learned to pray more targeted prayers and fast more frequently than I was accustomed to. Consider what Matthew chapter 17 verses 19 to 21 says, Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this type can only be overcome through prayer and fasting. Truly, when we seek God, we will find Him when we seek Him with all our hearts. Saying my life began to change over time would be an understatement, especially when I shifted my focus towards Him. There was a noticeable shift in the spirit and the natural realm. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 11 to 13 reads, This is a faithful saying, for if we died with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. God's plans for my life became clearer, and I had hope for a better future once again as a result. At work, my hard-hearted boss suddenly availed sales commissions for our department, which wasn't the case for a long time. This was pleasantly surprising to me that as stubborn as he was, God moved him to do so. At that point, I was in a place of despair and wanted to give up on life. The extra income on top of my regular salary helped me to meet long-standing objectives which was satisfying. I received a lump sum that dated back about six months, so it went a long way in easing some financial burdens. To honor God, I allocated a portion for a first fruit offering which opened new doors for me. It took me a while to get accustomed to the new normal, but I certainly wasn't complaining. See, God was beginning to show himself in a mighty way, and my hope for the future was restored. It has been growing since then, month to month, as I've constantly committed it to the Lord. It's been amazing. See, God also gave me revelation, which was more of a blueprint of how to take my online business to the next level. To give context, by that point, it was already 11 years old without much success to show for it. This time, I saw a clear roadmap to follow, which inspired confidence, and I've been working on it since then. These are the kinds of things that happen when God shows up in our lives. While I was going through all this, I continued to serve in the house of the Lord despite my situation. I'd say that's part of what helped me to stay sane through all the adversity I was going through. It wasn't always easy, but it helped me to grow closer to the Lord. Serving in church helped me to heal in some ways by taking the focus off of my situation and helping others. I did pull back from some service departments that were very demanding that I couldn't handle in that season. However, I struck a good balance between serving and giving myself a chance to heal. If I had focused on myself during that time, it may have taken longer to recover from my heartbreak. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 to 25 says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I had a group of men from my discipleship group at church who prayed and encouraged me in the early days, 
Just having people to talk to helped ease the shock of what I was going through. If I didn't have a fear of God and that kind of support, I possibly could have ended it all. Most men take their lives because they have no one to run to, which shouldn't be the case. That period helped me to see who my real friends and enemies were when I was at my lowest. People I had fellowship with before celebrated my calamity, which was followed up with a smear campaign. I've since learned that having a few true friends is all one needs in life to face challenging situations. I also had more mature heads to talk to in the church who gave counsel and prayed for me. Their support and counsel were invaluable to me, and it made me appreciate the importance of community. We can't get through life alone because we're going to need each other at various points. Nurturing mutually beneficial relationships pays dividends you may not fully appreciate today. Some of those benefits will be seen in crises like the one I went through or later in the future. As we close, God wants you to remember that your faith is going to be tested at various points. He allows hardships to come in our lives to know whether or not our faith is genuine. It doesn't matter what you suffer, but know that He is a God who vindicates His children. He will never allow His faithful servants to be dominated by their enemies. That would be a breach of His promises in the Bible. You're going to need to have God's Word hidden in your heart so that you can respond in the moment. Life will come so fast at times and you won't have time to prepare for tough situations when they arise. We must study the Word of God for times like these in our seasons of peace and calm. The devil has no answer for the Word of God and that's why it's a surefire weapon to use against him. I pray that the word you have received today in your heart may bear fruit and produce a hundredfold. You shall live and not die and declare the goodness of the land in the land of living. You're still alive and that means God has a plan and purpose for your future. Maybe you were close to giving up and taking your life, but God still has great things in store for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He has you in the palm of His hand and knows the end from the beginning. You were born for such a time as this, so hang in there and don't give up. Lord, I thank you that the word has gone forth and that it will not return to you void, but will accomplish that which you have purposed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.